Hi everybody, this is Drew Tomlin with the Association for Middle Level Education, and today I'm joined on this Hangout um, by Becky Kordatsky, uh, and Becky is an education coach and tutor at Bex Basics in, in, Wilton, I'm sorry, in Milton, Wisconsin. Uh, she also is the uh, Alternative Learning Coordinator at the Milton Area Youth Center, and also she coordinates their Time Out for Parents program too, and uh, as a parent myself, I always appreciate Time Out. Uh, and of course, she's also the author of this wonderful article that you're checking out in AMLE Magazine entitled uh, Derailing IDK, an acronym that I had heard in my classroom uh, many times and also as, a, as an administrator too, IDK was uh, an, off, an oft present phrase, an acronym. So thank you so much, uh, Becky, for talking with us today. You're welcome. All right, we're going to get right into it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and reveal the, the secret, and that is that I, IDK stands for I don't know, right? So yes. um, that expression, why is I don't know, why is that such a devastating phrase in the classroom? Why do we take it so personally when kids say that? What do you think? Well, it punches a hole in our emotions, and mm -hmm. we have to you know, and it releases uncertainty, confusion, guilt, anger, shame, uh, feeling disrespected. Uh, in the least, it disrupts um, our flow in our teaching and blocks the pathway. And we take it personally when we're not confident in where we're going. If, if we know where we want to go, what our purpose is in our discussion, then we can take that I don't know and turn it into something to explore. Um, hmm. You know, we tell ourselves initially, we say, well, I'm not a good teacher or uh, this is a challenge to my authority and I will not have it. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, oh, my teaching lacks clarity. They don't know what I'm asking um, or all right, if you want a power play, I can play along and I'm older than you are. <laughs> right, right. Or, or we say, you know, well, a good teacher could handle this. Um, right. Those are the parts of the story we tell ourselves. But if I know where I'm going and, uh, you know, following the, the train metaphor, if I know what track I'm on, mm. then if, if the track is taking me to the right answer and I want you to guess what the right answer is and I want you to guess what's in my brain, then when you stop the train, it's, wait a minute, we're not going to get there. But if right. the goal is deeper thinking, mm -hmm. uh, critical thinking, uh, maybe the goal of, of the discussion that I'm having today is for the students to check their understanding. When I know that, and you throw an IDK at me, then I say, oh, the train is slowing down, or maybe I need to take a different route. I can do that. And you, and then I can remove it from taking it personally. Um, so go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's a choice. Well, I have a choice on how to handle this. And, and it has to be a conscious right. choice. And it's not a one time and it's done. It's each time you have to remember, no, this is where I'm headed and this is why I'm going that way. And I choose not to feel disrespected, even if the student means it that way. That's their problem, not mine. Right. right. And, and to see it, as you said, uh, not necessarily as a, as a problem, but instead of a, a barrier, uh, like I don't know being the impediment, um, to learning instead seeing it as uh, okay this is your starting point this is uh, you know and psychologically you know examine my own psychology um, from a teacher's point of view and say all right you know what, what's my hang up with them saying I don't know and um, you know also you know um, taking away or, or dismantling or deconstructing like a the teacher centered classroom right so uh, one of the things you talk about is uh, one of the things you talk about is to create like a safe classroom environment um, working together too. So how, how important is it to have students share with a partner or a small group first um, before they share with the whole group? And then um, 
when you have them in their small groups sharing, how do you make sure that they're on track and don't get derailed uh, as a small group and they're discussing? Oh, yeah. That's their job to get derailed. And mine is to say, <laughs> no, this is where you need to go. It's okay. We'll do it my way, but I can understand your position. Uh, I love the think pair share mm -hmm. strategy and the modifications that you make in the classroom. And what that does is, is the think part of it is the student engages with their own brain and the material. And then the share, the pairing is connecting with students around and checking what else there is to see or think about on the material. And then the sharing takes it one level further. Um, yeah, keeping it controlled. Uh, for me, I had to keep it structured uh, and limit the time to share uh, depending on uh, the amount of content. You know, it might be something short, like turn to a shoulder partner. Right. Um, or if, if the kids need a movement break, then I would say, all right, you've got three minutes. Go and find your birthday partner and talk about this. Uh, ready, set, go. So that they had a, a beginning point. Um, right. Sometimes I would hold my stopwatch in my hand. Um, it's also fun to put like a timer up on the smart board. Right. And, so, and go ahead. So, so clearly the, the structure of, uh, that small group work is, is important. Um, but I, you, and I, you, you mentioned in your article, um, Peter Johnston's, um, book choice words. Um, it, it's a book that I also, uh, found very, very powerful in how to respond to students. So uh, in addition to the structure and how you structure their work, what impact does teacher response have on student engagement and motivation and success in your opinion? Um, you know, when they say things like, I don't know, what, what words do you use to keep students going? The teacher response is critical. You set the tone of the classroom. Students want to know if I, as the teacher, am going to judge them or am I going to help them move forward. Uh, and words convey my respect or my disdain. Mm -hmm. And I have to be very careful about my words and ex continuously examine how they might take that. And uh, students want to know is Mrs. Kordatsky on the journey with life with them, or does she feel superior? Is she right. trustworthy? Um, what words do I use to keep students going? I love to create win-win situations. Mm -hmm. uh, starting class, I often have unusual bell work activities, and it might be a puzzle, or it might be uh, you know, a spelling activity or something that, that I'll use later in the classroom, but very often it's, it's strange. And, and so I'll say, um, Sean, get us started as we talk about this material. What's one you know or one you're curious about? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the implication is, Sean, I expect you to answer, but whatever answer you give is the right answer. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to have just very clearly stated uh, expectations and goals and reasons. Mm -hmm. I, I invited the students to ask what the teacher reason was for this activity. Uh, I Giving them busy work is insulting to them. It's mm -hmm. disrespectful of them. And so I did not give busy work. Now, I gave things that looked strange, <laughs> but if they wanted to know what the teacher reason was, I could give it to them. And they they were welcome to ask. I preferred that they ask respectfully, but oh well, you know, they're eighth grade. <laughs> they're, they're learning. Exactly. And some of that learning is learning um, not only what questions to ask, but how to ask them, those social um, niceties and decorum that uh, they're learning along the way. Right. Also, it's a great opportunity to rephrase their uncertainty. 
and try to explore what part of this do they not know. One of my pet peeves is when someone says, well, just ask. Well, like with technology, I know that I don't know something, but I don't know what it is. All I can say is I'm stuck. Right. And, and so if the person puts me down for not knowing, that shuts me down. Right, exactly. And, you know, and so my students and I have a discussion about a discussion. I tell them, <laughs> <laughs> keep asking. And if it has to be the same question, ask it again anyway. Eventually, I will figure out that I'm not answering your question. And it's my job as a professional to explore what you don't know. Right. And you just have to be patient with me because it might take me a while, but it's fine for you to ask that question. Yeah. And, and you know, I was going to ask you a question about how to, how to honor and celebrate that kind of uncertainty when I don't know happens. Um, but you've already answered it, right? I mean, it, it's uh, uh, instead of shutting down their uncertainty, it's um, making sure they understand that it's part of the process and um, perhaps more importantly or as importantly that you're there uh, to help them um, with any questions that they have and keep asking that question. That, that, like you said, that's, that's, that's great. Um, so is it, if it's okay, I'm going to move right on to the final question because you've already, you know, you're such an advanced learner, Becky, that you've already <laughs> surpassed that question. <laughs> well, so, I've, um, got a few, I've got a few more things to say about yeah, go go ahead. honoring and celebrating. Just really be respectful of how difficult this discovery per process is for them. You know, it's just, that's part of honoring them. You know, view an honest question with joy. Things like, your brain is asking a logical question, or that's exactly what your brain should be asking right now. Great, uh, you know, thank you for being honest. Those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Uh, you know, teach synonyms so that they can rephrase. I don't know. Well, I'm uncertain about, or I need clarification here, or something is keeping me from moving forward. That's all part of teaching. So, okay. No, I mean, yeah, I think that's really good. Thank you for that part about using synonyms, especially because um, when students get stuck in that script of I don't know, um, we sometimes need to provide them with an alternative script for them yes. to learn, you know, like different lines in a play. If this is all the world's a stage, sometimes you need some help with a different script to use when you're on that stage. So thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, not only are you a master in derailing, you know, I don't know, but you're also a master of the metaphor um, since you use the comparison of train derailment in your article. So uh, the, the last question here should, should be a breeze. Uh, it's a metaphorical uh, journey through food. So Becky, what do you think? Are you ready for it? I'm ready. All right. So if I don't know, if the phrase I don't know was a food for middle level education, what kind of food would it be and why? It's, this is a tough one. I had a good, okay, this is a good one to chew on. Uh, but as I think about middle level students, um, octopus comes to mind. Ooh, okay. All over everywhere, not necessarily pleasant, uh, certainly can get you trapped, so on and so forth. But if you have octopus that's raw, it's messy, it's unpleasant texture, it just doesn't really sound very good. But if you use a carefully concocted marinade and give it a light coating and then deep fry it, it produces a delicacy that tastes like chicken. Southern fried wow. chicken, in fact. Wow. And that, don't, don't that. forget the spicy brown mustard. Of course. Could not forget that. I, I, you know what? I have asked the food metaphor question uh, every single time for an interview, and you're the first person who has used octopus. <laughs> you, you put, you put it way out there, Becky. That was so phenomenal. And like you said, the a raw octopus is, uh, as a dish, very messy and and everything like that. But in, and 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 we're tempted sometimes upon first looking at it. 
to shove it away and say, ugh, don't even want to mess with that. But like you said, um, through careful preparation and marination and everything like that, it, it, it can be um, quite tasty to uh, digest. So um, with great outcomes. There you go. Wow. Well done, Becky. <laughs> Good job, good job. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk through a little bit more about uh, derailing. I don't know. Thank you so much for the article and for the conversation today. You're certainly welcome. It's It's been my pleasure and, and an honor for me. I, it's just been fun. Excellent. Well, you've made it fun. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone out there, checking out the article at AMLE Magazine and this interview uh, here at AMLE will really help you reach every student, grow professionally, and create great schools. Thanks again, Becky. Thank you.